Welcome to my pedal board. Um, it's kind of chaotic and probably looks a bit different to most um, boards that you've seen. The first question that people usually ask me is, why do you have three of these brown pedals all the same? And these pedals are uh, quite old, discontinued um, pedals, um, which are orig originally meant for bass guitar, but it doesn't really matter. They're EQ pedals. They work for, for anything that you put into them. And I have three pickups inside my guitar. There's a, a humbucker in the sound hole, um, a pickup under the bridge, and a little microphone inside. They come down three separate cables, and each one goes into one of these EQ pedals. And they are parametric EQ, which is completely different to graphic EQ, because with a graphic EQ, the, the pedal, or whatever it is, it's already decided for you which frequencies you're allowed to change. So like when you turn up the bass on your stereo system at home, it's just bass, it just says bass. It doesn't say you can choose what, what that bass is. It's just preset at a certain frequency or whatever. This, you can change the frequencies. So for example, um, on the microphone inside the guitar, I can, you can hear, I can, I can make it feedback if I want to, which I don't want to do. So I can use it to cancel out feedback. I can use it to sculpt the sound. So having that level of absolutely kind of pinpoint EQ control over three pickups and then having those three pickups all run at once, that's what creates my sound. That's what it is. And um, yeah, to me, that's really quite, quite fun to do. And then the line selector, that kind of Swiss army knife pedal, which is just incredibly useful. I didn't buy it for this purpose. I've had it since I was, a, I've had this pedal for, well, since I was a kid. But um, I got, I don't, no idea. I don't remember why I bought it. There must've been some reason at the time, but I use it now to actually blend those signals all together. And then it goes into one mono, mono signal. Um, okay. Then I have overdrive on here. Only the humbucker goes through the overdrive. You wouldn't want the microphone going through there. That would be terrible. I also have the magic brown pedal, the um, super octave, which I leave set on the polyphonic setting. And what that means is um, when I play a chord, uh, the pedal listens to a chord, it picks out the lowest frequency it can hear, and it pitch shifts that frequency down an octave and puts it alongside what you're already doing. So basically, if I play two chords, I'll dial out the, the dry sound so you can just hear what the octave pedal's doing. It's like having the world's most boring bass player, but also the world's most reliable bass player, which is quite nice. And I actually, when I play gigs, it's almost always on, that pedal. And when I record, I have like the three, I use these three pedals for recording the EQ pedals, I have a couple of mics on the guitar and I have a separate channel just for recording the, the, the wet output from this octave pedal and that's on my new album on every track. So um, yeah, that's really, really vital pedal to me. What happens then is this overdriven or octave sound and the other pickups all get mixed together into one signal. Then the whole thing goes to the delay pedal. Um, I like to have my delay in stereo going ping pong side to side live. Um, because it adds to, when you're just one guy with a guitar and vocal, you're not very stereo, you're not creating a very wide sound. So having the, the ping pong delay um, is uh, really good for that. I use the analog, the faux analog setting a lot, um, as it is right now, because you can hear it takes a lot of the treble out of the sound. Sometimes you add digital delay and it makes the whole thing sound like there's more treble because the loudest sound that it picks out tends to be the the attack of the, the notes. But the analog setting rolls all that off, so um, it's it's really, really useful to me. Um, again, I, I use that a lot. And reverb, um, again, nice big stereo sound. What I like about this, um, reverb pedal, what's uh, really good about the sound of it in particular is that a lot of reverb is just 
Uh, this noise. It's just a noise. That's all you get. Whereas if you listen to what this pedal does, and what I've always thought was good about it is, uh, if I play a note, you can hear the note inside the reverb. As I play the notes, the reverb sound that comes out afterwards is full of that note. So it's making the whole sound richer and, and warmer and fuller, not just adding a big splash to everything you do. In this pedal, I'm using the moment uh, the, uh, a bit of EQ on it. Um, the preamp setting is actually quite good and I, I've had the gain up a little bit and it's uh, about sweetening things a little bit. Um, and the uh, reverbs are on all the time. And then I use the, it's got a harmonizer in it. Generally for me, and what I do, um, having like an intelligent harmonizer going along with it isn't really what, what I, I, I want the pedal for. It's just not really appropriate for my sound at all. Just having backing vocals from nowhere, it'd be, it, to me it would be, be weird. But what I do use is the um, uh, pitch shifter setting down an octave, and it's not even, like, I'm not, it's, I'm not really using it as having like backing vocals. You never have a backing singer like on stage with you, who was just singing everything you sang down an octave. Although now I really want to do that to find somebody the lowest voice in the world. But really, it's it's adding like this weird, pseudo artificial and yet really organic sounding thing to the vocals, which is I really really like. I'm on Passion Flower on the video for that. You can hear it, and it's really really clear in there. And people often think I'm doing some weird thing with my voice or something, because it does sound really natural, even though it's a very digital kind of a thing. I don't know. Um, and then um, you can assign the, the switch on here to whatever effect you want. So generally, I have this set generally to switching the delay on and off. So at certain points when I'm playing live, I um, will control my own, my own effects rather than having the sound engineer do it. So I can switch the delay on the vocal at certain points in the song where I want it to have that extra kind of thickness and kind of epicness that having a big stereo delay brings to it. And I think that's it. I think that's all of the pedals. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope that was informative and not too terrifying and weird. I guess you might think that going on tour to Africa or China with a bunch of pedals and you, you kind of you are reliant on them and stuff, and um, especially these ones. It's not like I'm going to be able to replace these, these discontinued ones anywhere. But they're just never going to, they're just never going to break, are they? I don't, I don't know how that could ever happen. I don't know what you would have to do to one of these pedals to break it. I mean, it's just, I don't even know when they were discontinued, but they must be kind of 30 years old, nearly, or something like that. Maybe 25 years old at least. And they're just completely indestructible. I do have two more at home, but the only reason I have those two extra ones is just so that if I want to record something, because it's funny, I could EQ stuff in my, in my digital audio workstation that I use, I could just EQ it in there. But I'm so used to using these, and it's so kind of just, if you do it with your ears, there's no markings, and that's a thing that's true with all boss pedals, there's no markings, and people might complain about that, but it's like, there's a reason for that. You shouldn't be setting the levels with your eyes by where they're, they're pointing, you should be just listening. So, yeah, I have two at home just so that I don't have to dismantle my pedal board if I want to quickly record something, you know, so I have two extra ones. So I probably have about half the world's supply of, <laughs> of those pedals, but I just don't think they're ever good ever gonna break. Let's do this again in another 20 years and see if uh, see if I've still got the same pedals. I'm sure I will have. So